All right, I'm here with, uh, you know, Coach A, uh, one of the best coaches in the country, one of the best coaches of all time. Lonnie, I'll, I'll say it. I don't care. Um, you are now, as we talk, two, about 48 hours away from starting NCAA postseason play. Yep. What are the butterflies like for you? Or do you even get them anymore? Um, well, Corey, thank you for saying that. Um, and you are one of the best at what you do, too. Hey, so. there you go. <laughs> two great, two all-time up. greats. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow, nerves. Um, I don't know if there's too many nerves right now in the sense of playing some softball. I mean, we've been doing it for months now. So um, it's just more of making sure that we cover everything to be pretty prepared for what's ahead of us. So we've been really hitting that with practice last couple of days of understanding what South Carolina has and UCF. So nothing really changes from what we do in week in to week out. Um, just a little bit more um, preparation for the three teams that are coming in. I think I asked you this last year and it was kind of prophetic because it didn't, the, the NCAA tournament didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. But when you win an ACC tournament and have the reg and win the ACC regular season, I know there are bigger goals. I know every season of Florida state's supposed to end in a certain city in a certain state. Yeah. And it's not Tallahassee, Florida, yeah. but do you allow yourself to really embrace and enjoy? Cause y'all just get, you get to hang up another banner. You get yeah. another trophy and do you, uh, you do it so much, but do you allow yourself to embrace the accomplishment? And more importantly, I guess, because it, do, it doesn't matter what you do. Do you allow your teammates or sorry, your players yeah. to embrace the accomplishments they had? Yeah. I mean, you have to, it's, it's super long season. So you've really got to enjoy the moments when they happen or else why do you play? Like if you right. don't, if you're out here playing just for the end goal, um, then you can't really enjoy the, the growth moments um the comeback moments the big swings um different players doing different things so something that we do you know the girls like to have ice cream parties every now and then so if we accomplish something that's been a goal of ours we'll have an ice cream party um we're having a social tonight just to celebrate the regular season and the tournament championship and just to really talk about it and gather with our people to celebrate it because um you know i think fans in general like um we always like the last win in national championship but you also talk about the seasons and the players and the plays they made. So a lot of people will really reflect on Kat Sander Cox year, right? So right. I know I'm super excited about what she can do this weekend, next week and the weekend after, but boy, like her growth and the things that she has done so far has been outstanding, right? It's just been so fun to see. And Josie Muffley, I mean, the plays that she's made. So if we don't take time to celebrate that, like why do you come out every day to the park, you know? And so, um, so you're right. Like, like take little moments for sure. And you brought up both of those names. I wanted to talk about both of them. They're both seniors. This is their yeah. last run. First off, Sandra Cock obviously gives a ton of attention, well-deserved. She's talking about one of the best that's ever done it. Clearly, yeah. she is one. But Josie Muffley, I was talking to Aslan on the show like last week. Like, Do you think people are born – with, yeah. with 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 the stuff that she has as far as, you know, I played baseball, not nearly at the level that, that Josie played it. I, I considered myself a good fielder, but not like that. Like she has natural instincts to she's fielding the ball and her weight's already on the foot she's going to be throwing it from as yeah. she's bringing the ball in. And, and it just looks so natural. I know she practices it, but yeah. do you think some people are just born with stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, obviously your athleticism, you know, you're born with some athleticism and then um, I think, you know, maybe growing up around the game of baseball, you know, probably gave her a little edge to some of those things. I know Jesse Warren was the same way, right. um, you know, and now that the game of softball is starting to play at a high level at younger ages, you're getting more kids with that, you know, instinctual stuff um, from there. But I think Josie's biggest challenge is one, one, to stay healthy and, and two, to be consistent, you know, so it's one thing to be a highlight reel. It's right. another to be consistent every single day and be healthy enough every day. And so that was a big part of Josie this summer is like, can I stay healthy, strong and fit all season long? And can I be consistent with my emotions and my play on the highs and lows? And so that's something that she has been incredible at this year and very proud of her for that. But uh, but yeah, you know, I think your athleticism plays a big part in your ability to play a game, uh, whatever the game is. Uh, right. And then your smarts can kick in to take the rest of what you don't have in athleticism. And when you talk about her and Devin Flaherty at second and then Kaylee at third, I mean, there aren't many more athletic infields in the country than what you have right there. Right. And and I guess it's been it's been 60 games now. Yeah. But, Har but Harding going full time to third base. How has that worked out? Has it worked out as well as you'd hoped it would? Um, I mean, when you're re replacing Sid Cheryl, right? Like yes. Those are 
there is a huge shadow cast on that third base. You know, you go from right. Jesse Warren to Sid Sherrill to like, you know, some people that just play the game at an elite, elite level and think the game elitely level. So I think for Ocho, for Kaylee Harding, um, the ask of her was a lot. But she's comfortable in right field. She was doing her thing. She was good at it. And then, you know, when the team needs something, you're going to step up and do it. And she definitely did. And it was uncomfortable for her. And it affected a little bit of her mindset hitting. And But she stuck with it. So, um, so I'm going to go with the fact that, you know, like, I am super proud of the fact that she has done it for us, but now she's starting to do it because she loves doing it for her. You know, she loves getting after it. So I think that that's been quite fun to see her grow and um, she's getting comfortable with Dev and Josie and Dev and Josie have been playing together for a long time. So they're right. like the back of their hands right now. Ocho is starting to get into that mode a little bit. And, and going back to Kat, uh, you know, I don't know how she started off the season. Clearly, I have a novice eye. I didn't think she was great, great to start off the season. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, you guys challenge your team by playing these incredible tournament, that incredible tournament down in, in Clearwater. But I would say the last, I don't know, three months has been as good as she's ever been. And you yeah. use her in a number of different, or you use her in roles. Like, she starts sometimes. She'll yeah. start, come out, go back in. She'll she'll close out the last I guess my question is number one, has her has her use changed? Was that a goal coming into the season that you knew her role would be different? And also how has she adapted to that kind of role where she she know I guess sometimes she knows she's coming in the fifth. Sometimes she's starting. How does how is that, I guess, that conversation and that role laying out that role for her, how did that develop? Yeah, I would say in 2020, 2021, we started really talking about it as a as a pitching staff. And when we had Watson, Arnold and um, Kat, we started rotating that a little bit when we made the 2021 run there for the runner up championship. Um, different looks are a huge part of our game right now. Uh, offenses are getting really good. So I, as a pitching coach, had to get more creative with how I was going to present a pitching staff and I had to develop a pitching staff. I also knew we got towards the end of the year last year and, um, Kat had, you know, run out of a little juice and I need to figure out how to manage her better to make sure that she was strong enough to go into postseason this year with, covering a lot of innings, what Danielle Watson had last year um, with some younger arms, uh, maybe some inexperienced arms. So there has been a different look this year, strategies wise, for sure. Um, Kat is a very smart pitcher. She's very competitive and very smart. So she has a really good understanding of what she's trying to do. So I don't think sometimes she wows you in the beginning. One is I don't want them. I don't want all the pitching staff super sharp in February. I want to be sharp right. in June. Right. So it may not wow you then, but like as you watch her career and as you watch her games, you start to really understand what she's doing. And then it becomes really impressive again, back to her consistency and her composure. And um, she showed her composure and experience a lot in the last couple of weeks. Um, and I think that's where the nails part comes in is like super competitive. You see that strut and that fist pump and you know, it, it's pretty awesome, but She's engaged in each pitch, and she knows what she's doing. I was going to say, something that's happened in college baseball, much to my dismay over the last, I don't know, five or ten years, is they've almost become like wrestling matches with the two dugouts screaming at each other and posturing yeah. and beating their chest and saying, let's go. Has that has that melted or carried over a little bit into softball? And the reason I ask is, I can imagine, I know she's not doing it to show anybody up, yeah. but when she strikes someone out and does that little pump or that little strut, yeah. Does it rub teams the wrong way? I don't think she cares either way, but have you seen have you seen that happen? Um, no, I haven't seen that too much, but um we do we do go on the line of um I think we're having conversations in our game right now. What is respecting the game? What is disrespectful to teams? Um how fans want to handle themselves versus teams right. want to handle themselves. Um I agree with you. I I've seen a lot of sport. I'm not just going to say baseball, but a lot of sport. It's really gotten out of hand of the disrespect for the game. And I think we try to ride that line a lot. So I'm okay with competitive passion moments. Like you have right. a passion moment, a passionate moment striking someone out, but taunting and um, the the dugout taunting to me is like, you know, it's gotta go. Like th there's a moment in the game you can, you can have passion for. There is a too much in your face taunting that doesn't belong in the game. And that's a fine line and something we all have to take care of. And I think we gotta take care of in our sport because I love our sport. I think our sport is very classy and a very family friendly sport. So I'm a, I'm a big talker on that side. I have a lot of conversations, a lot of coaches on that side, because we have to take care of it. We as coaches and we as players, the outside world's not. So we're the ones that are in it. And talk about in your sport. I mean, it's been taking off. I know people say pickleball is the fastest growing yeah. sport in the country. Give me <laughs> yeah. a break. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be watching pickleball. The ratings you guys get yeah. uh, for this sport and the fact that your tickets, Lonnie, sold out in, I don't know, half a second, 
yeah. five minutes, whatever it was, tickets for yeah. this regional. I have to imagine as a softball lifer, and you, I know you played in some stadiums and you coached in some stadiums. There, there might have been a dozen, two dozen, three dozen people there. Yeah. What is it like for you on a Friday night of a regional or a Friday or a Tuesday night when you're playing Florida to see that place look like that? It's just got to yeah. be. I, I don't know if you pinch yourself or you allow yourself to take it in, but man, what a cool, what a cool moment for this sport. Yeah. And what a cool moment for this fan base to get to celebrate it with this program. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think a couple of things in there, Corey. One is I always tell the girls like, man, this is not normal. We've worked really hard as a program yes. to grow this. And then they're all looking at me like, well, this is normal because this is what we play in front of all the time. And I have to remind myself, like, you know, I, I'm starting to be around the game. Like I remember when, mm -hmm. you know, I was here and we played Michigan and we were 12 people in the stands, you know, and the animals were like six of them, you know? And so it's like, <laughs> right. I remember when, uh, you know, and they have being part of the growth, but then the freshmen or the younger ones, they only know what they know. They only right. know this environment. So, you know, we do have to, as a, as a coaching staff and a program remind, you know, where we came from, but then continue to build it. So the reason why we sell out in three minutes, we don't have enough seating. Softball in general mm -hmm. doesn't have enough seating. And so like, how do we grow that? You know, University of Oklahoma is building a $25 million stadium. They ripped up their architect drawings because they want more seats now, 6,000, 6,500. They had 3,500. Like, they, we just need to build it more and, and see the bigger picture of it. And on the fact that you say, Corey, about our fan base seeing it, like I'm so proud of the fact that they feel like they've grown this just as much as we've grown it because they're, they're really like, it's a very intimate setting here. So you feel like you're a part of the team. You can be there right there with the team. You're in all the moments. Like you are riding the highs and lows as a fan, but you also know the players and you know us and you know the program. And that's what's super special about Tallahassee. And, and I love that. So I don't feel like, you know, I'm going out there being judged on wins. I feel like we're going out there as a fan base and a team trying to get the W. We're all in it, and it's super cool. And, and going back to the, the well, the sport itself, like the the specific nature of this league or this season and the way the sport is growing, the pitching, you mentioned it a little bit. Like, I look, I, you, I know you guys use five, you use four or five pitchers pretty regularly. Yeah. I don't know, man. And I'm again, I'm, I'm a softball novice, but when I was growing up, I don't remember that being the case with college softball. I feel like yeah. it was maybe one or two. One team would ride the same pitcher over and over again. And I was like, well, maybe that's a Florida State specific thing. But then I looked at South Carolina. They've had five players pitch over 40 innings and have yeah. over 20 appearances. UCF has two that are over 100 innings and another one that's 70. That yeah. said, is this is this where the sport is going that it's not? Yeah. And why is that? Is it because, like you said earlier, that if you show the same pitcher to the same offenses over and over, they will end up timing her up and, and hitting yeah. her? It's a culmination of many things. Um, you have kids specializing at a younger age now, you know, so kids are really getting better. They're getting taught better at a younger age. They're coming in as better athletes, have a good understanding of how to get on a rise ball, how to get to velocity, how to get under a drop ball. So they're coming in smarter. You have pitching machines now, you know, we every year are trying to get these hack attacks and get out there and, and get machines that can simulate pitchers. So, you know, I think Florida came in here with machines um, warming up to play us and they had everything dialed in to cat, you know, Sander Cox drop balls and rise balls and change ups. Right. So you're simulating stuff and seeing it over and over. So the time that cat goes out there, you've already seen her 10 times before you play her. Um, and then I think, you know, we're on TV more. So when you get on TV and people can see you, I'm going to say back in the day when, the right. VHSs were going around. <laughs> I didn't see the pictures we were facing. You just heard the glove popping and you're like, oh, that sounds like it's pretty fast, you know? And so you, <laughs> right. you don't know until you get in there. So now familiarity is there and there's just no surprises. So you got to go out and play a good game of softball and, and make your adjustments. So that's where that's coming from. You know, you can get someone one time, you get them two times. That third time, better hitting teams are going to make adjustments. So we as staffs have to have something up our sleeves to be able to, to get through that. So, yeah. And two, two last questions about this particular team. Number one, if you could talk about the rest of the pitching staff, because it's not just Cat. You don't win 50 games and win yeah. ACC stuff with one pitcher. Um, yeah. you've, got, you've got a bevy of them. You've got a yeah. host of good pitchers. And did you know that going in? Did you, is this, Has this season, did this season play out like you expected it would? Because you lost a really good one. Yeah. And did, did it in um, last year. So did you, did yeah. it, has it played out the way you thought it would? Yeah, I uh, I mean, it's funny, I map out the season and I'm, I've been pretty close on my numbers, which is pretty crazy. What does that um, mean? What does that mean you map it out? 
So I map out innings. Uh, I knew exactly oh. how many innings I wanted to get Cat. I knew how many innings I had to fill with Danielle being gone and who would fill those innings. You know, I knew Mac Leonard would be good for us, Ali Dubois. And how, like, if I don't have a plan for the season on the innings, I can't develop the pitchers nor get them comfortable in the role that we need this coming weekend. So I think that's been, you know, really important to us and been pretty close, you know, I was like kind of surprised, <laughs> but uh, Mac Leonard, we had to manage a little of her back, you know, she's a, a little bit older and she's got some back problems. So I had to manage her swings and first base play and pitching. She's come on strong towards the end, which has been outstanding. Uh, Allie Dubois had to manage a little hip problem with her too. And so she's been in and out here and there, but have done a great job for us. I think the, Dark horse has been McKenna Reed. You know, we had Maddie Bach and McKenna Reed as freshmen coming in. Both have tremendous stuff. McKenna Reed has kind of picked up in that area and done a really good job of picking up some good innings for us. So you look at those three of the things that they've done and then royalty, you know, getting some opens for us. Um, you know, Emma has been around the program a ton. Great. Just got to get her opportunity, which could be next year for us. So the growth of that and how you do it as a baseball pitching staff, we're starting to understand how to do it as softball staffs. And I was going to say also when it comes to analytics, uh, I know I remember talking to you maybe a year or two ago that you said softball was not nearly caught up to baseball as far yeah. as the analytical um, with the numbers and the, the spin rates and what that means and everything else. Yeah. Have you gotten closer to that? Do yeah. you feel like you have a better handle on what those numbers mean and how you can how they can impact the future? Yeah, Corey, a couple of years ago, there were three teams in the country doing it. Now there's 20. Uh, right. I think the SEC all shares all the data. Um, you know, I know that, you know, it's coming down to we're talking metrics now. Um, so um, we have the Acrotech system. We're getting the updated Acrotech system. It's a camera. It's taking pictures. It's got rise. It's got velocity. It's got exit velo off of bats. Like you are a scientific softball player now. Still trying to figure out how to go to school and feed yourself and drink some water. But you're a scientific <laughs> softball player right. and you know how much you can lift, how hard you can hit it. So we're trying to match those two in a sport that's still somewhat amateur, right? And trying to match those two and play at a high level. You know, you are right. Like Florida State wants us to be in Oklahoma City every year. Like that's a that's a big um, standard that we want to get to. That's where we want to be to too. But, you know, we're trying to match the metrics along with the personnel. And I would say, Lonnie, you know, I was watching the uh, selection show. And I, I, it's stuff that I think this is stuff that people don't really think about in the moment. The selection show was great. They had cameras everywhere. It was an hour long show, Holly Rowe and everything else. Yeah. And then they have another hour after that, like breaking down the matchups and stuff. Yeah. And I'm don't you think, and maybe I'm completely wrong. This is the next step in the development of the game. It's not just, oh, here's a, two weekends in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. Yeah. Enjoy it, everyone. It's the regular season that matters. It's building up the postseason. It's analyzing the matchups before they happen. Yeah. I just think all of that helps grow the game. Yeah, yeah. Because now you're in, like you're watching it, and you're like, whoa, who is this kid that throws 74 to 76 that's coming into Tallahassee this weekend? Like, I want to see her. Now I know that my team, you're cheering for Florida State, and you know they're going to face velocity like that. Like, you're all into it. So when you have knowledge, it brings excitement to the level of trying to compete against that and who's going to be the matchup for it. So, so yes, the more knowledge we have, the more power we have to be able to grow and develop a, our game at, at a high level. Still down to us, we have to execute. Right. <laughs> you know, we have to execute. This is going to be a big pitching tournament. Uh, there's a lot of good pitchers coming in here and the execution piece is going to be huge for us. And last question. Uh, obviously we know how it ended last year and it did not end well yeah. for you guys. <laughs> How much is that? I mean, I know I know you've talked a lot about how that was a driving force in the off season. That was a driving force in the regular season. Yeah. Is it something you mention to this yeah. team? I mean, they know it. And yeah. what do you do? How you know? So sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce your way. And I'm not saying that happened that day. You didn't play yeah. well. Yeah. But how do you like kind of understand the importance of all these games? But you also want to kind of be as calm as you can too, right? Like yeah. that. That's such a weird dichotomy. For yeah. an athlete to have. So how do you as a coach get that, get them to be fearless, but maybe not have the nerves that you want them to have, that, that you don't want them to have nerves? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I want nerves because nerves oh, okay. things on the line. Right. OK. Um, right. Gotcha. You know, like if, if you're not if you're not feeling like a little like anxiousness of like excitement. So you can take that excitement as like, oh, I'm excited or like, oh, my gosh, I'm scared. Right. Like it's a, it's a decision on the nervousness, the butterflies of how you decide to take those. And I think, you know, when we look at last year, Corey, I was like really into it. We dive into it. But we got some calls that didn't go our way, like the Duke game and the championship game. Right. Like calls did not go our way. I'm um, glad you brought that up real quick. <laughs> yeah. 
So they said that she was making the transition with the ball in her glove. Yeah. Yeah. And they reviewed it? No, you can't. It's non-reviewable. So they, all right. So you would have had second, third, nobody out, correct? Yes. And it said it's two outs and nobody on. Well, we had one out at that point, but yeah. So it, it ended so the it inning. It ended the inning, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. go ahead yeah. with what you were saying. I'm sorry. I just wanted to get that on record. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying like at that point though, like our team could have folded, like nothing yeah. was going yeah. for us. There were so many things that, you know, we had another call at first base. It could have been I easily an out call and up being yep. a safe call. And our team, I could see our team like, so what? Let's just take care of the next pitch. Let's take care of it. Right. Like where last year when things weren't going our way, we got quiet. So now I'm starting to see us morph into a mindset different than last year. Does that guarantee that we'll win this weekend? No, but at least we've really addressed it. And now we're going in with another tool set. You know, the game, the ball can bounce either way, but at least we'll be more present. And we have had talked about it. Even the selection show, they talked about, oh, Florida State didn't make it out. You know, our whole team's like, whatever, different year, right? Like right. you have to talk about it or else it sits right underneath the rug and is definitely going to boil over at some point. So We've addressed it. I like how we bounce back from a lot of adversity this season, whether it's a Vautech or down to Clemson or, you know, we've been in a lot of situations and we've kept our head above water and really been good about our left and right. Yeah. It's about this person here and this person here. It's not about me getting quiet. And so, uh, so that's been the address this year. And that's what the, the behavior that we'll fall back on here come this weekend. And as a head coach, last question, but as a head coach, last, I, I think what you'd want is just play well. Give yourself a chance of something, because yeah. I think what really bothered all of us, and uh, you more than anyone, I'm sure, about last year was you just didn't play well in that yeah. last game. You played so great for so long, and then one day you had a bad day, and that yeah. first game was as listless as a Florida state game had been all season and you yeah. just didn't give yourself a chance to win that one. Yeah. So is that the, I mean, that's the goal. That's the mindset, right? You be yeah. in this, you give yourself yeah. a chance to win. 100%. Yeah. 100%. That's that, what we've been talking about last couple of days. I mean, we have a, a V low pitcher. We have a change up pitcher. We have power hitting, we have slapping. We have it all. We have a Maris team that flat out swings it. You know, I mean, the coach is a, a New York Yankees guy, right? Like they get it. Like it, there's just no easy games anymore and we have to come play. And if we want to move on, we have got to fight for it. So it is a great season. We had a great season last year. Our yeah. regular season last year was incredible, but that's not going to guarantee anything for this weekend. We knew that this year, another great season this year, nothing's guaranteed. Got to go get it. Lonnie, you are the best. I'm the best. We'll see. We'll the two see. Great, yeah. Well, that's right. You, you got a couple of weeks to prove that. But yeah. Lonnie, thank you so much for doing this. I thank really you. appreciate it. And good luck this weekend. And we need to, and we will talk again next weekend as hopefully we prepare for a super regional. I love that. Thanks, Corey. All right. Thank you, Lonnie.